All right, everybody, quick unboxing video. Um, I just got this bad boy in the mail today. Um, EHL to be specific. Um, this is a sewer standard plus. Um, I ordered it online through Reverb and actually a guy in Belgium had it. I looked at a few of them in the US, but I really wanted one with a roasted maple fretboard. And at the current time, in the middle of the pandemic here, this was the only one I could find. There's no stores around me anyway, so that sell these. So um, anyway, this is what the box looks like. Pretty cool looking box. Really nice logo on there. Uh, a lot of stuff about, you know, this left the factory in a great condition, so if anything's wrong with it, um, please report it immediately, that kind of stuff. You can see it's been rewrapped in Belgium uh, by the guy I bought it off of because he had to take photos of it to, uh, he had to take photos of it to uh, post it on Reverb. So let's open her up and see what we got. Hopefully it's not all cracked and crushed or something. All right. I'm not sure how much of this was done by the guy who sold it to me, but you can see it was wrapped pretty good in bubble tape, bubble wrap. In the bottom, I can see he put, actually that looks like a factory. Um, there's a piece of foam on the bottom to keep it from hitting anything there. Obviously, it's a plastic bag that it came in. More bubble wrap down the bottom. Take that off. So, this is the gig bag that I've heard so much about. Um, there's people going both ways on it. I particularly do kind of side with the guys who say this is a expensive guitar. You would think it would come with a hard shell case. I do kind of lean that way. Um, you know, first impressions. It is probably the best gig bag I've seen, but it's still, it's a gig bag. Um, you know, really good, sturdy material, sore logo on it. Um, somebody had taped that on there, which, assuming that was the guy that I bought on, but that just says the, the color and the model of the box. So, before we open it up, let's take a look at what's in. Okay. Absolutely nothing in there. Let's see if there's anything in the front pocket. And there is. So there's a collection of tools in here and a spec sheet. Uh, so there's an Allen wrench. Let me get a little bit closer here so you guys can see. There's an Allen wrench with uh, some rubber, kind of heat shrunk around it. Let's see what else is in here. We've got spec sheet. So, yeah, spec sheet. Let's see, it was built, confirmed, started, it started building on October 14th of 2019, last year. It's now April 22nd, 2020. So here we've got tremolo arm, whammy bar, whatever you want to call it. That bad boy right there. And three Allen wrenches of various sizes there. One with that heat shrink wrap on it. You can see that red there. I'm not sure what that's for yet. Um, so a little bit of case candy there. There's also some, this is a heavy duty, really sturdy strap and another 
strap, two straps. I guess if you want to do backpack. Yeah, that's it because you can see that big bag has two uh, two attachments down here. So I assume you put them two ends there and then the one end up there and it becomes a backpack. That's pretty cool. Never had one like that before. I always had the shoulder strap, just a single shoulder strap. Pretty cool. All right, so now the moment I've been waiting for. I mean, I've seen it online, but you're seeing it with me in person the first time. Yeah, I hope the, the light there does it justice. Oh man. Oh man, that's beautiful. That is just that is just beautiful. So this is the uh, what is the actual name they give it? It's like a whale burst of some sort. Um, Simplest right-handed uh, faded trans whale blue burst. I don't know. Kind of kind of fell in love with that. I like blue. Um, you can see that. Pretty cool. And one guy tricked me online. I was watching another one of these videos and he said, yeah, this is the fretless version. <laughs> and at first it does look like a fretless version, but no, this is a, um, this is a protector. And there you have that roasted maple neck I was looking for. Absolutely stunning, man. Absolutely stunning. One more look at that. I'm a sweaty hands guy, so probably not going to stay this nice for too, too long, but I'm going to do my best to take care of it. I say that about every guitar. There's back, um, easy access to the tremolo. You know, my Fender that you can see over there, that's, you know, that's a player series. Great guitar, by the way. A few minor uh, flaws that I have, but I actually think that's a great guitar for the money. Um, but one of the complaints I had is once I block, once I blocked the tremolo, um, I could no longer access the strings through there. So I, I always end up just taking the back off. But this one, I, it looks like it would be very easy to get in. Easy. Now, you, if you could see here, it might be hard to see, but this is this part behind the where the neck bolts in is actually slimmed down so you can get a little bit better access. This is the first time I've ever held one of these guitars in my hand, so um, first impression much better um, than my Fender, which is pretty much similar to this guitar, but I mean you just you can feel great access up there. The neck so it's maple, the whole thing is maple, so it's not a maple um, back with a, you know, pal ferro or pal ferro cap. Actually, no, it, it is a cap on there, so it is capped. I've heard so much about these necks. Some people hate them, some people like them. Um, it is, first impression is that it feels a little bit thicker than my fender but in my experience it's been you know you may not like it at first um or it may feel different just because you're used to something else but it's like going from like an ibanez you know to uh to a les paul it's like you suddenly you feel like you have a tree trunk in your hand going to the les paul but after a few hours of playing it you're right back in in the in the groove um, so I'm not that worried about that. I think that's something I'll get used to. And actually, it's it's very close. It's, it, it is thicker, but it, it's close. So there we've got the logo on the front. Locking tuners in the back. I don't know. If they're, I've never had a guitar with locking tuners before. I always felt like this isn't where you lose your tuning. If you're going to lose your tuning, you're going to lose it right here when the string gets bound. Um, 
but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I think I always stretch out my strings when I first put them on, so I don't think that that's uh, gonna be a problem. So this, I'm, I'm putting in the tremolo arm now, and I've heard so much about this. Um, I wanna be careful here, because I don't know. you just like me to break this on the, <laughs> the video or something, but. Um, oh, okay, so. Ah, I got it. So, this screws in. It doesn't pop in. I thought it popped in at first, but it screws in, just like your Fender one would. Um, but then there's an Allen wrench on it, so now we're figuring out what the Allens are for, uh, to tighten that down and apparently give tension uh, on it, so that, you know, if you're a guy that likes it just loose in there, you can do that if you want to tighten it up a little bit. And I noticed very little play in it, whereas that one, the fender, when I move it, you care a little bit in here, uh, but not much. I also do notice that tremolo um, is floating a little bit, which is not one of my favorite things. I may end up blocking that. We'll see. I'm going to try to live with it. And we'll see how far I get. The thing I hate about this is when you break a string, you're out of tune for sure. Um, you know, if it's not floating, you're fine. Okay. So, any other first impressions? I mean, just, just a beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful guitar. Great craftsmanship. I, I hope I can do it justice with my playing. Probably not, but, you know, we'll do my best. Um, also here, we get the knob for uh, splitting the single coil. I believe that's what it's for. Probably not using the right terminology, but bear with me. Um, but that's my understanding, is to basically turn this into a single coil uh, or a humbucker. Um, Five-way selector switch. One, two, three, four, five, just out of the check. And uh, yeah, stainless steel frets. Looking forward to that because I actually have uh, on my Fender, I've only had that a little over a year and I can already see that the frets are getting worn. And if you can see, I have this, uh, yeah, this guy right here is uh, um, an American strap that I've had uh, for many, many years. And there's no strings on it right now, but one of the reasons is because I was just getting ready to sell it because the, the fretboard is pretty worn and I'm looking at a refret or at least a recrown on it. Um, and I just don't play it that much anymore. Uh, so I may end up selling that. So yeah, that's it, man. That's first impressions. I'll plug it in. Get rid of this. And um, we'll give it a little spin. I have to say, I was going between this and the Ibanez AZ. I mean, to me, the Ibanez AZ is a, is a worthy competitor to this. Let me grab the pick here off the floor. Um, is a worthy competitor to this based on all the reviews that I've seen and it's um, the price wise it's price wise it's it's actually a um, much better price and it does come with a hard shell case the only reason I didn't is because I felt like this is the first time I've ever spent this much money on a guitar hopefully my wife will say hopefully it's the last time actually she doesn't mind um, hopefully it's the last time I spend this much money on a guitar and uh, you know, I just didn't, I felt like I, if I bought that, I might always be wishing I had got something better. I don't know that it's any better. It's a mental thing and it, it's a marketing thing and, it, and it's worked on me. That's all I can say, you know. Um, so, let's see. We'll see how, how in tune it is. Now, imagine this has been shipped halfway across the world. Um, Another thing I noticed, this is just a minor thing, but the volume knob. Um, so the volume knob on this guy, a lot more grip on it 
it, that may sound silly. It's probably, it might even be the same manufacturer that makes the knobs on my, uh, but it's, it's a lot more, there's a lot more grip. Ah, and another thing that I really wanted from this guitar, um, and we'll see how it works out. But when I'm playing, I'm not a guy who does volume swells all the time, right? And if you look at the position um, of the volume knob, I'm not going to go over and grab it, but you take my word for it. The volume knob on the Fender Strat is right next to the pickup. And the problem I have a lot of times, especially when I'm trying to play with no volume and I'm just warming up, a lot of times I'll be playing and I'll bump that volume knob. And I know I'm bumping it when it's up all the way. And it's just where I place my hands, the way I play, um, I end up bumping it. And so that, that has got to be an annoyance for me. And I noticed the AZ Ibanez and also the Source, they moved it down. And I'm really hoping that that's going to be something that I like. I can't imagine why I wouldn't. And I never use the tone knobs. I'm not a tone knob guy. Um, I always turn it up to 10 and I mean once in a while I try to play around with it if I got too bright of a sound and I just need to cut it back a little I might do that but it, I would say you know it's probably 1% of the time of playing guitar I've ever used that. Um, and the selector switch too I'm not sure about the positioning but I've also noticed in a lot of the latest things that I've been trying to work on a lot of alternate picking things and stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm bumping into that a lot. Now you know Quick view of it looks like it's about the same position. Um, all right, let's see how it sounds. Let's give it a. So, what am I playing through? Boss Katana. Love that amp. It sounds out a little bit. It's not bad. Feels a shame putting a snark on this guitar. Mm, especially when the battery's dead. impression is is definitely uh, brighter definitely brighter sounding um, you know but you could still get some of those Hendrix you know uh, sounds uh,
<laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Business gets Let's give it some juice, huh? so much fret buzz on um, the other guitar and it's it's no fault of that guitar it's that um, I lowered the action I messed around with it I'm not a luthier I just wanted to get it to a place where it felt comfortable um, and it probably should be taken to a proper shop to get it done I think I, you know I'm one of those guys who likes to think he's a luthier but definitely not but it did not come out of the box like this guy did I mean this this is just set up properly. And I, I've been told that they're plecked at the factory. Uh, if you don't know what plecking is, it's a, it's basically a machine that, you know, does a, uh, it scans the, the neck and it looks for all these different uh, levels and makes sure that everything is very precisely level and set up exactly how it should be. Um, so, and it shows, I mean, I won't have to do anything to this. I won't have to do anything to this at all. <laughs> so, how about this test? Enough. 23 minutes, 24 minutes. I'm sure that's more than enough that you want to see of me. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't have to give me a like or a subscribe or any of that. I don't care about that. I'm just trying to do this to, to uh, hopefully if you guys are thinking about buying one, I would say, I mean, man, I've got 
24 minutes worth of uh, uh, experience with it. So far, I can only compare it to the players level uh, strat. We're talking about a $600, $650, maybe $700 guitar. I bought that used, but I bought it barely, barely, barely used. And I bought it for a real discount. This brand new. Um, and it's a lot more money. <laughs> It's a lot more money. I got it for a pretty good deal, I would say. Not a steal, but I got it at a very reasonable price, and the guy sort of spoke up. Anyway, thanks. Bye.